Welcome to the Productivityist Podcast. I'm Mike Vardy, your host and founder of Productivityist. What if our bodies could talk? What if they could tell us that what we're doing to them and for them is either good or bad? Well, that's what Dr. James Hamblin does, not just in his writing for The Atlantic, but for this video series he does called If Our Bodies Could Talk, which I caught on to a while ago and have enjoyed every one of them. A lot of the videos do have a direct correlation to productivity, and I wanted to have him on the show to talk about not just those videos and some of the stuff he discusses in those videos, but other things that I believe affect our overall effectiveness and efficiency and therefore productivity. He's a funny guy. He's insightful. He's smart. We have a little bit in common. I'm no doctor, but uh, I'm glad I got to speak to one here this week on the show. So without further ado, here he is, Dr. James Hamblin, my guest this week on the Productivity is Podcast. I am with a doctor, doctor, the first doctor. Well, no, I had Tim Pitchell on the show. So the second doctor on the show, uh, James Hamblin from uh, The Atlantic, uh, probably best known from The Atlantic, here with me on the Productivity is Podcast. Uh, James, thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Mike. So I wanted to talk to you today, first off, about some of the stuff that you've been putting on your videos, the If Our Bodies Could Talk series over the Atlantic, because that's kind of how I found you at first, is, is through these videos. And one of the things that, that fascinated me is that um, it's always good when I tell people that there are certain things that they should probably do, and then someone who is has science as a background and a doctor says, yeah, this stuff, this is what you should do. So uh, I want to talk about the tablets, the, the tablets you know, it's Tablas Thursday, right? That's what you, that's, that's what you've had, right? It's, it's either Tuesday or Thursday. You could probably interchange them really if you wanted to, right? Well, that was one of my, uh, ideas of why I thought this would be a good joke in the first place. I mean, at least the, uh, the Thursday joke, because it showed so clearly should be Tuesday if you're into alliteration. You um, so, so Thursday was just an arbitrary choice, which I said was because taco, uh, Tuesday is taco Tuesday. Right. So, from, from the Lego movie. Uh, is it? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, that was not even something that I, I think I had seen. <laughs> I, think um, was, I think you were ahead of the curve with this. I yeah. Think, cause I don't think the Lego movie was out yet when you made oh, that. Oh, yeah, probably. I've been playing with Legos since way before that movie came out. I've got the Green Lantern Lego spaceship right here next to me. I picked it up the other day. The Lego store was sold out of it four times in a row, and I finally picked one up. Oh, my God. I didn't know they sold out of things like that. Yeah, the Green Lantern's a big... He's a big deal for me. I don't know why. Oh, okay. but Yeah, it's a willpower, the whole ring thing. But anyway, so... So, <laughs> I, so can you explain to people a little bit what, tab, what, what, what that meant? You know, the high idea of kind of going tabless for, for a certain period of time? Yeah, well, I find that I... And I think a lot of people sort of fall down an internet hole of tabs where you get halfway into reading something and then you think about reading something else and so you open a new tab and go to that page especially it happens with wikipedia where you see an interesting fact and decide maybe you should just oh go read about that and then go read about that and then check your email and then before you know it you have a hundred tabs open you've accomplished nothing but you're one tenth of the way into a hundred different projects and you know we know that that's not productive for the brain every time you reset to a new task it you lose time overall uh, and you lose productivity. So if you force yourself to get out of the habit of hitting uh, command T or whatever, uh, whatever command uh, needs to do that for you, but, uh, sorry, I'm speaking. <laughs> if you get out of the habit of, of hitting command T and just try to finish something and then move to the next thing and start over and uh, do one thing at a time, that seems to be what you know. Research is saying makes you most productive at the end of the day. So that was tough for me because it's such a habit to to hit command T and to constantly be trying going to new things. Um, so I had to get uh, uh, actually manually disable tabs in my browser in order to pull it off. And even then, I was still sort of checking my phone. But I found that it, it sort of worked for me, and I thought it was a concept that you know people might be interested in, something to try. And it, it seems to have been. There's a hashtag that people are still tweeting every uh, Thursday. And um, yeah, it, it got posted a couple places, and people seem to receive it well. 
Now, what do you think about these forced discipline applications that are out there? So, I mean, this is obviously some sense of manual, you know, kind of discipline that you've put into place where it's like, okay, this is, this is a habit I'm going to build. This is, the, this is the day of the week this happens. But what do you think about those tools that are out there that kind of, you know, like stay focused, for example, or freedom for the Mac where you could actually disable certain things if you want on your computer? Are, are you a fan of those or do you think that they kind of provide a more of a crutch that people tend to lean on for too long of a period of time? Hmm. That's a good question. I have not used them. I like the idea. I should try. Uh, I don't think it, I I wouldn't see it as a crutch. I mean, obviously this is something that you've spent more time thinking about than I, but I think, um, for a lot of people, it's just hard to break a habit. You you get into these habits of the way that you behave when you're at your computer, the sort of things you do and the way that you flit around or that you are in entertainment mode versus work mode. And so I think sometimes forcing your brain into uh, the way that it needs to be can can teach you how to how to work, how to um, how to get into a mindset that you need to be able to get into manually. Now, what about these habits? You're talking about habits. And this is an interesting segue because I want to talk about the, the sad desk lunch. <laughs> the, the idea that – and I was doing this back when I worked at the, the film festival, back when I worked at the Victoria Film Festival for a couple of years, is that everybody did this. Is Everyone kind of sat at their desk and ate their lunch because they felt, well, you know, I'm just eating lunch and I can work away. And I would be the one guy that would be off in the corner kind of eating at the table and they'd go – they'd look at me like I was – you know, had two heads on. Uh, it was like why, what, <laughs> what, what, why do you think people – continue to I mean first off I mean why do you think people continue to kind of say okay you know what I can't get away and why do they need to get away to take that time to have that lunch to get their you know to 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 not sit at their desk and 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 you know chomp away and check email and all that stuff yeah I think if you ask most people if they take breaks if they're forced to take breaks um by the end of the day they'll overall be more productive if if you don't if you just sit down and you try to work for 12 straight hours you're not going to get as much done. I uh, couldn't quote a beautiful study for you offhand, but I have seen um, that when people are forced to take breaks like five to ten minutes every hour, they end up being more productive overall. They're more creative and feel better about themselves at the end of the day. All these things go hand in hand. So that is, there's not just the element of not working straight for 12 hours. There's also the social element of it. Uh, Mm. Which is, you know, it, it it's sort of a a newer practice too for everyone to just work straight through the entire day and, and not take some time to e- chat with people and and hang out a little bit. So, um, you know, it's kind of breaking a newer trend as opposed to trying to uh, really radically reform anything. Let's talk about sleep because science has proven that you know you need a certain amount of sleep. I, I'm a night owl. As somebody who did comedy, and you've done comedy as well. Like, I mean, comedy doesn't happen at brunch. You know, it's something that you would do at night, and then I don't know about you, but I would get you know I'd finish a performance, and I'd feel like I wouldn't be ready for bed. I'd be no. ready to continue going. So, is there? I mean, sci- I know people say you know our, our circadian rhythms are designed that we wake up in the morning. I'm still a night owl ever since I did. Like, I can't. I get up at eight a.m. Unless I'm forced to get up any earlier, and I'll stay up till one p- one a.m. Um, is there? We're seeing the miracle morning. I know Hal Elrod. You know he's 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 somebody I've, I've known, and, and and he's put together some great stuff. I'm not getting up at three thirty in the morning. Uh, you know, but I, I get the idea. Is it the same kind of principles when it comes to what we're talking about with diet? Is you know just get the right amount of sleep. It doesn't really matter when you get the sleep. Just get the right amount. Yeah, the only data on that that I know about is people who work night shifts. Uh, have more chronic health conditions and uh, die earlier. Yeah, that was. The, that, I saw that the Sleepless in America documentary was really good in that. I mean, it was a long documentary and almost put me to sleep. But they did talk about that, like depression and stuff can set in for for them as well. Yeah, I mean, it's unlikely too that you're getting really rock solid sleep during midday. When I was working in, in the hospitals, I I'd have to cover weeks, sometimes two week blocks, usually a week at a time of night shifts and they it would it would take me that long the whole week before i could potentially sleep for like six hours at a time it takes you a long time to adjust i guess if you're working full-time night shifts you know ideally your body should be able to shift but yeah so i know that's not good i think if you're in some sort of sync with the uh diurnal rhythms of the earth for, for whatever reason and societal patterns of when other people are alive and functioning 
uh, you, you and you coincide with them, then you end up being healthier. But uh, you know, within within limits, it's more about the quantity than than when. And I know there's it's important to to try to go to sleep and wake up at similar times. That uh, if you try to compensate and uh, sleep three hours past when you normally wake up just to make up for the the three individual hours that you missed earlier in the week that's that's no good for you too you should try to try to get up even if you went to bed late we're doing things to our body that our body would yell at us <laughs> like just stop you know uh and and i think a lot of people spend their time fighting what their bodies are saying just so that they could you know like the not not the br- the brain has you know i mean the brain will tell you like hey we should do this or we're getting external factors saying hey you need to get this done you need to do this but there's part of you that goes you know i just need to sleep or i need to uh, this doesn't feel good like what do you say like I, I don't know if there's a real question here but but what's the what's this is there a solution is there just like you know how do you how do you help people that are saying you know like I'm having a real battle between what my body clock and my my energy levels are saying versus what my demands are. Yeah, that's a tough thing. I mean, people, there certainly is intuition to what you need to be doing. But also, would I ever go to the gym if I didn't, you know, that's not what my body is telling me. My body is telling me to just hang out on the couch. You know, I know that I should, so I go. And I know I'll feel better after I do. So there's listening to your body in that way. And then there's, you know, knowing what's best for you based on some sort of logic that hopefully should um, drive you to maybe sometimes, you know, choose a salad over a bag of gummy bears or <laughs> something occasionally. Like if you, if I listened to my body, I would, I would pretty much eat a pack of Haribo gummy bears for lunch every day. Um, but I don't. <laughs> so, so I guess one of the things that I want this kind of leads to is the idea of setting goals and like, you know, putting frameworks in place so that you can have your body and, and yourself just kind of say, okay, what do I really want? Well, not, not just the gummy bears that are right there in front of me, but long term, you know, like mm-hmm. most, I think we've come because there's so much happening around us and the world is truly, you know, I mean, <laughs> time zones don't matter all that much anymore, right? You know, we're three hours apart right now. And, you know, I mean, I, my, the guy who I just developed a course with lives in Australia, so he's a whole day ahead of me. And, and so time zones are really the, – the world's gotten a whole lot smaller, which means the information travels that much faster, which means it comes to us that much quicker. And so the demands are there. So what do you say to people who are having a hard time saying, okay, you know what? I get this, but I don't have time to sit down and figure out what I really want. I'm just going to keep going. Yeah, I think, you know, get some data on yourself and s- see how easy it could be to – you know, if you want to write a book and you can do it in 20 minutes a day, every day for a year, that is actually a ton of time and you could do it even if you think that you don't have the time for it. Um, so then you, you, you know, you can do that by kind of charting out your days and how you could accomplish that and making a, making a plan for it and making small quantifiable goals. I, I was just talking to somebody from the uh, American Council on Exercise and they, there are national guidelines in the U.S. about, you know, not just diet, but how much exercise you should get. And right now the, the guideline is 150 minutes a week uh, and it can come in any sort of form that you want, any uh, allotment, as long as you get that 150 minutes. And obviously that's kind of arbitrary. You know, if you get 149, it's not going to be... A significant difference in your health, but it, it, they know from behavioral research that if you set a quantifiable goal, or something tangible, or something short term, um, you know it's certainly better than saying however many thousand minutes in a year, mm. <laughs> and and it, and and it's easier than telling people they need to do it every single day, um, and it is kind of arbitrary, but it, it seems to work better to to have that sort of quantifiable thing where you can say, okay, I did enough. It's been a week. I. I got what I needed, and now I'm done. Um, and I guess that influences people in an effective way. So that's, I think, where a lot of those sorts of recommendations come from. Finally, a couple more questions. Number one, how is email ruining us again? I mean, I know. I just want, <laughs> uh, no, email, how do you deal with, like, email is one of those things where, and it's been scientifically proven that when you get an email notification, you know, you see the dopamine levels rise, right? And, of course, when you deal with one, it's a sense of accomplishment, so you probably get the same thing. How do how do you how, how do you kind of get out of how do you get out of your inbox? Because I mean, it's just like the tablets the tablets issue where you, it just becomes an, an an endless storm. How do you get out of your inbox so that way you're not constantly you know dealing with the small wins or the very meager wins that email can give you? 
Yeah. I keep it closed for a lot of the day. And then you just sit down and, and power through them and get, you know, just you're doing email and then you're not doing email. Um, it's sort of very similar to the tablets Thursday approach, single tasking. But I also suggested in that video that we just have a, a cool button, which would sort of be analogous to the like button on Facebook or the fave on Twitter, you know, that you're, allows you to acknowledge something and say yes or ha ha or thank you. Or, uh, yes, okay, we'll meet at 5 o'clock, good. And without having to type all that out. And someone actually made that app for Gmail in response to the video, and I now use it. It's, <laughs> and you can actually usually cool someone's email, and they get an automated response, and it archives the email, and the response says, uh, James Hamblin, cool your email. That means he thought it was interesting or amusing, and he appreciates the <laughs> email. And... Uh, it's super fast and super easy, and hopefully people find it not too disrespectful. Um, but it's something that's free, and anyone can get, and it's called Put Some Cool in Your Email. Awesome. I'll definitely put a link to that in the show notes. The other thing is I know a lot of people use a tool like Asana for project management, and they've got the little heart button for any comment, so it keeps the flow of information going without you having to stop saying, that's great, thank you, or whatever. So I think we're going to see a lot more of this. Finally, uh, New Year's resolutions. We're what three months into the year now. Uh, I would imagine two months, two full months in. Uh, I imagine that um, you know, as we record this, I-, I imagine that some people out there are not. <laughs> they have not kept up with their New Year's resolutions. What do you? What are your thoughts on New Year's resolutions? Just really quickly. How do you? How do you? Do you? T- do you do them? Do you? How, how? And if you do, do you do them at the start of the year, or do you just try to build habits throughout the year? Um. I'm constantly kind of coming up with new uh, goals and behavioral things that I should try to work on. Um, So the new year is kind of arbitrary for me. Um, This year is for me just to um, focus on not buying anything ever and uh, buying experiences instead of things, which is something that I sort of focused on in some psychology research in a piece early in the year, but about the value that we get from, you know, taking a a weekend trip someplace or... um, going to a concert instead of buying a new clothes or, um, you know, some device that is only going to get old and wear out. And it sort of seems like buying that material thing might actually be smarter because you're going to get to use it every day for a long time. But buying the experience, you know, when you, when you remember it, you're happy and it creates a sense of nostalgia and all the kinds of good things. So yeah, that's kind of been what I've tried to mean trying to to focus on i think for a lot of people a year is an incredibly long time to say that you're gonna go to the gym every single day um and the shorter term things are probably smarter but uh whatever works for you awesome james thanks again for taking the time to talk to me today i really appreciate where can people find your work on the internet although there'll be lots of show notes just let our audience know so they can just jump on it right away oh come to theatlantic.com we have all kinds of wonderful magazine writing every day Awesome. Thanks again, James, for joining me this week on the Productivity Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. And there you have it. That was the interview I had with James Hamblin. Now, there was some other stuff that we discussed that is available to Patreon supporters. So if you go to patreon.com slash productivityist, you're going to hear the extended version of this interview, which we talk a little bit more about uh, a few things, including dietary choices and things like that, that will definitely have an impact on your productivity. Again, all this stuff revolves around awareness. And it was it was so awesome to connect with James. In fact, uh, next year, so as we're recording this, which of course is uh, March of 2015, in February of 2016, the dad 2.0 summit is going to be in washington dc and that's where the atlantic is so my hope is that i'll actually be able to connect with james in person maybe have a coffee uh not the one that we talk about in the in the patreon uh exclusive version of this interview but you know a regular coffee and just chill out and and you know get to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that we enjoy regarding you know whether it's productivity or just being healthy and and making ourselves better uh, than we already are so thanks again for listening this week uh for all of the patreon supporters thank you so much for being part of the show Uh, i am hugely uh excited that you have all joined me and if you're interested in supporting again go to patreon.com slash productivityist and there are a ton of perks available we've got more podcasts coming down the pipe uh 
including not just interviews that we've had or discussions, but also um, hybrid episodes like the meetings episode we did a few weeks ago, where you're going to hear little clips from not just people that you've already heard on the show, but other people as well. And some of the other people who are helping me out with productivity as, as we grow the podcast, we grow the site, we grow everything about the productivity brand. So thanks again for joining me this week. We will see you all again next week with a brand new episode of the podcast. Until then, work on being more effective, work on being more efficient, which ultimately will lead you to work on being better than ever. Thanks again. Keep moving forward and we'll see you next week.